thing. Oh. Thank you. So, so good morning, everybody. I'm not sure why, while I, I, I can't speak and eat at the same time. Uh, so, um, I shall delay my breakfast for a little bit. And uh, the, the topic that I, I've um, chosen to speak about this morning is is called halakhic options. And uh, let me give you a little background uh, to this. Um, about 48 years ago, um, we were living in Cambridge, and I, I was a research scientist years ago, and Cora um, came into the Revenant and did other things. And as a newly married couple, we were living in Cambridge, and there was no, there was no rabbinic presence in in Cambridge. Actually, there was. There was a reform rabbi. This was not something I would ask Shilas to. So, um, something cropped up, and I wanted to um, uh, explore this and find out what would be the best thing to do. But the topic that is not important, but what I decided to do was to go to the top, go to the London Basin, which in those days was in Wobie Gone House. And um, I, uh, I I had to deal initially with a somewhat, I thought, a somewhat austere Marcus Carter of the show. He was a very, very efficient um, administrator of the base team. And um, he arranged for me to see one of the diamonds. So I went up to London and I went in. And I remember that I was, uh, I had an opportunity to have a conversation with the late Brian Grossness, the only dropper. And um, so I, I explained what I've come about, and he starts asking me questions. You know, what's your background? What you do? This, that, and blah, blah, blah. So he said, "Well, in your case, I would, I would say that what you should do is X." So I said, "Well, what, what do you say in my case?" So he says, "Well, if you were from a Hasidic background, I would say Y, and and so, or if you're Sephardi background, something something different." And at the time, it, it struck me, my learning was nowhere near as advanced as uh, hopefully is now. At the time, it struck me as a bit odd. I thought, you know, the, the halacha is the halacha. You know, if there's a, let's have the psak and, and that's it, and uh, um, cut and dry. But, you know, so I, I left a bit puzzled that obviously, depending on who was presenting the question, you'd get, you'd get a different answer. And uh, you know, years later, when I when I started preparing for smicha, and, and the smicha I did was uh, under Rabbi Nachum Rabinovich at the time was the um, uh, the principal of Jews College. He left in the middle of all this, and I was. But his approach was to train rabbis to paskin shires. It wasn't just to cover the um, uh, you know the, the syllabus, as it were. Like as if you were doing an A level. So um, I realized then that actually the way a POSIC looks at a at a problem, it does it does depend on circumstances, and sometimes there are a range of options from which to choose. So what I'm going to do this morning is to take you through just a few examples of where this this sort of can come up in in Halakha. So the first source is um, from the uh, is from Sukkah. And should do with the laws of sukkahs, and there the, uh, the 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 relevant verse says, "Lachachem lachem byomer ishom." You should take for yourselves on the first day, first day of sukkahs. Your your arba moon have to belong to you specifically. Peri eats hadar, the beautiful the, the fruit of the beautiful tree, or the beautiful fruit of the tree, which we know from uh, our masera, from our tradition, is the esro. Kapas tamarim, the um. The fronds of the uh, um, palm of a palm tree, the alav eight of us, and the thick leaved um, uh, twigs from a tree, which is a hadasim, the arabinachal, and the from the willows of the brook. And we have our tradition of what species uh, works for this. Now, there's a, a Mishnah in um, in Gemara uh, uh, Sukkah. It says as follows, Rabbi Yishmuel, Rabbi Yishmuel says, Shalosha Hadassim, what you need is three Hadassim, I mean, we all know this, because that's what, when we go and buy our Abba Moon, this is what we get. Three Hadassim, Shtei Arovas, two um, willows, Luluf Echod, one Luluf, the, the, the palm branch, and the Esrog Echod, the one Esrog. Afilu Shanaim Ketumim, and in the case of the Hadassim, 
even if two of them are have been clipped at the top, you know, the top of the stem is gone. Um, but echod ena cotton, but you've got one that's 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 complete. That 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 that, that you can be yoked to the mitzvah with that. Rabbi Tarfin, a second view, Rabbi Tarfin says, Afilu Shloshton Ketumim, you need your, your three Hadassim, but even if all three are clipped, that still works, that, that still be okay. Rabbi Akiva Omer, and Rabbi Akiva says, no, Kashem Shalulav Echod Ve Esrog Echod, just as you, you have one Lulav, one Esrog, so Kach Hadass Echod Ve Arova Apa. So it's good enough to have just one. Um, a tweak of Hadassim and one uh, thing of our only basically Rabbi, Rabbi Kiefer's position um, is, is really from the, all these things are brought together in the same verse so just as you've got one Esrog and one Lulav so the, by comparison the other things you only need one Lulav says the Gemara Tanya we learned, we learned as follows Rabbi Yishmael Omer Kari Eitz Hadar the fruit of the or the beautiful fruit or the fruit of the beautiful tree that's echot. That's a singular. That's one. Kapo, kapos tomori. Now, although um, it we we read it as kapos tomori, it's it's re, it's printed. It's not printed. It's written in the Torah. Kapas tomori as a singular. So we learn that by tradition, echot. You just have one palm branch. You don't need more than one. Anaf eight obos. There are three words in that in that phrase. Shlosha. As he says to have three of the Hadassim, Arave Nachal, and the willows of the brook, that is a plural, and the minimum of a plural is two. So you have two willows. But I feel Ushnaim Ketumin, even if two of them have been uh, have been clipped, the, the, the point of Echo Che'enokot, but one is and one is complete, one hasn't been clipped. The point is that if if the idea is he or mitzvah to do it in the most beautiful possible way, and if you've got uh, branches or tweaks which um, have got the tops come off. It's it's, it's not it's not the best way to do it. Now, what about Rabbi Tarfin? Rabbi Tarfin, you need three hadasim, and even if all three are are clipped, you can still use that for for your uh, abramin. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Kshem Shlov Echod by Esrog Echod. So just as in the past we see one lulav. And one Ezra suffices. So Kach Hadas Echod, one same thing apply, one branch of the Hadasim and the Arab Achas and Arab Arachas and one <coughs> um, uh, twig of the li- willow. So Omala Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer said to him, Yochal, I would have thought, Yehei Ezra Gimahim Ba'aguda Achas, that you should bind the Ezra together with them in one. You know, we have a holder that's that we use, which finds three of the four species together, and the esrog is separate, I might have thought they should bind them all together. Amrit, so you say, So if you look at the verse, to keep your finger on the place, if you look above, I've highlighted where there's a vov conjunctive in the verse, which connects the, the previous things, the two things together. But when it comes to pre eights Hadar Kapos Tomorim, there's no vov there. So they're separate. So Valona, Nehmala Kapas, it's only, it, it doesn't say the Kapas, it says just Kapos sing uh, without the vov. So how do we know that each of the four species um, prevents you from uh, performing the mitzvah if, you, if one of them is missing? Talmud Loma Lakachtem. So the, the, the verse says Lakachtem, you have to take them, and there's a drush on this. Shetzehei Lakachtem. Complete, we're perfect. We need all of these things. By the way, just as an aside, I, um, uh, when I was in Muslim Phyllis, the Rav there, um, I pushed quite hard for people to, you know, to make a sukkah, to have their own, uh, meaning, to make it easy for them. I, I had an arrangement with one of the people in Golden Screens to go and buy a whole lot of sets from him at knockdown price. Mm. And um, I would bring them home and people make it easier for the community. They don't have to go out and buy it. They could come to me and get their other bit in that way. Some years later, after I after I left, I'm in the office, uh, office of the chief rabbi, and one of my former members phones me and he's very angry. He's very upset. Why? 
because he went to, for the first time in his life, he went out to buy Arba Aminim because he had children in the Hillel school and they said, oh, we need that, we need to have our own Arba Aminim. Went to a um, gift shop in Gilda's Green and they were selling sets. So he bought a set which was in a sealed box and he opens it up on day suppers and there's no Arabos in there, no, there are no willows in there. So he fit it like a um, trade description, that thing. It says, he bought a set, but he got three out of four, and he's complaining to me because he went back to the shop during Cholomoid, I mean, part of somebody else's during Yonder, went back to the shop during Cholomoid, and the manager in the shop said, yeah, but everybody knows you have to get your offers fresh. You know, you get you come to get those, you know, separately. But he didn't know, so he, he was complaining to me about this. So I phoned up the, uh, I said, well, okay, look, I said, it's one of these situations where you're both right. So I phoned up the shop and I spoke to the manager and I said, I explained the situation. I said, well, this is the first time in his life this fellow's done the mitzvah. Can you please, you know, be uh, as generous as you can. Let, let him come and get this, our officers, knock down price or something like that. I want to encourage him to continue to do it. And he'll learn, that's how we learn these things. We, you know, we, we make our mistakes through life as we navigate through. Anyway, that's just as an aside. Coming back to our Gemara here. So Rabbi Yishmael, so Rabbi Yishmael, so he's, he's he's the one that says that you you uh, takes a more strict view, three adasim, two are robbers, etc. And he says like this, and then, and there's a, di a disagreement as whether they uh, you whether it works if they are katumim, whether they are got their the tops clipped off. So he says like this, Manasha. boy. If you hold the halacha should be that they should have complete. Um, stalks not clipped, then liboy namikul. Then, then you should say all of them need to be complete. You should not. Why say two clipped and one complete? They should all be complete. The elo boy shleimim, and if they don't really need to be complete, I feel a chad namila. So then, even even you don't even need one to be completely clipped. Amar bira, Amar Rabbi Abi. So another rabbi called biras. <laughs> Said the name of Rabbi Ami. Chazabar Rabbi Shmuel. The Rabbi Shmuel actually um, retracted from his his position. Omar Rabbi Rabbi Yehuda Shmuel. So Rabbi Yehuda said that Shmuel said, "Halacha Rabbi Tav the Halacha actually is like, like Rabbi Tav. Now he is a more lenient one. He's the one that says three hadasim, and even if all of them are clipped at the top, that still works." But as the Shmuel the Tame and Shmuel goes according to his view. The Omalahu Shmuel Hanon Mas Mizubani Aso, because he instructed the people that sell Hadassim, he said, Ashabu Uzvinu, reduce the price. You know what it's like? He comes to Sukkot's time, the, the people selling these, they know that everybody needs to get their Arba Aminim. So you could have bought, you know, twigs of Hadassim for fourpence, you know, early, six months earlier. Now everybody needs them. So the prices. So he says to them, reduce your prices because the Elo, if you don't, Darishna Lachuk Rabbi Tafan, I'll Paskin like Rabbi Tafan. And Rabbi Tafan is the one that says that even if they're all um, clipped, that, that, uh, that still works. Mm -hmm. So my timer, so what's 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 his reasoning here? Ile mission to make your if he if he wanted to Take the more lenient view. Then Lidrish Luchuk Rabbi Akiva to make it to faith. Why doesn't he? Why doesn't he fix the halacha according to Rabbi Akiva, who says you only need one stalk? All right, but Rabbi Akiva says you need one complete one. So the Gemara uh, uh, finishes off on this thing. to find three clipped hadasim at ease with the top line. Chad for cotton to find one that's completely whole. That loshkich, that's not so easy to get hold of. And so basically, he was busking in a way that made it easy for people to to um fulfill the halakha. So the point being was that he felt that there's a range of options given them a range of opinions. If the if the people selling the adasim are hiking up the prices, taking advantage of the of the market. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it in such a way that they'll have to reduce their prices uh, to make it easy for people to keep the um, so again there were three you know three opinions there three options 
of how to how to perform a mitzvah. Now another another example in source three is this. We nowadays we don't have to sort our meat and prepare it. It's all done for us, you know, the, the butcher shops and everything. But uh, when you do um when you do uh uh sort meat if you're cutting meat so shia shahir bamelah in a pachis mikhtailah milk the the time the minimum time that you have to leave the the meat being sorted before you can wash it off is it's um uh, the, the time it takes to to walk a meal which was a, a ancient uh, measure an ancient distance shahu it's approximately a third of an hour, about 20 minutes, 18 to 20 minutes. That's the time it needs to be in the salt. It says, but there are more ads at the bottom. But earlier days there, uh, he says, well, this is this uh, time period that you can rely on this if you're in, in the straits. Or even a priori, if, let's say, um, guests arrive. For them to uh, to make for dinner, um, you can rely on this shorter time frame uh, to do. It. Or it's Eretz Shabbos, or it's 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 Friday, and you're running out out short of time to prepare your meat for Shabbos. You can rely on this on this time frame. About mm -hmm. hockey, but without a reason like this, Haminav the Minav, which fixes the halach, is the Hashos Bonicha Shir You have to leave it sorted for an hour. That's that's how the, that's the norm. But ain't the shanos, and um, one shouldn't change the minha. But you see that there's there's an option to go to twenty minutes if the if the uh, if the need should arise. Um, the fourth one is slightly more uh, technical, but let me just um, explain this. So you have you have a situation in the time of the temple where if a woman uh, began a period, there was there was there was the uh, the, the the days of nida. She had. Uh, she'd have to keep seven days, and then um, but after that, she'd go to the mikveh, and, and and that evening she would be able to eat from kodeshim, from uh, sanctified food. If she saw any kind of eating in the eleven days following that, these are called yemei aziva. Then she's uh, it's a different din. She's got a dinner of a zava, and um, uh, if a, if a zava. Uh, uh, if a woman sees on three consecutive days, then she has to bring a korban before she she has to bring a korban, a couple of birds, um, you know, uh, before she can now eat um, uh, uh, this kodesh in the sanctified food. So here we have a situation. Um, I mean, this doesn't apply today because the temple we've got a different arrangement. But so you had a, a woman, and the 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 mishnah. Uh, is being deliberately extreme here to make a point. She had five uh, uh, instances where she uh, saw a flow of blood, but she wasn't sure whether she, this was during the the nidda part of the month or the ziva part of the month. Or another case, Sophie Kamishaledas. She miscarried five times. Right now, same thing. If a woman gives birth, then the Torah says she has to bring a korban. She has to, but if here's the suffix at, uh, at a certain stage, a miscarriage will count as a birth, and she'd have to bring a korban. Um, but if it's a very early stage, and and uh, you know you you can't you can't see whether there's uh, anything there really, then she wouldn't have to bring. But this is a suffix. We don't we well they weren't really sure whether it count it would count as a birth or not. So the, the, the Mishnah says, Mavia korban echot. She brings one korban, but ucheles bizavachim, and after that, she can eat from any uh, sacrificial meat. Because not everything was burnt up on the altar. So, you know, many, many offerings uh, that were eaten. But ein hashar aleha So if one, it says, so the first opinion here says, you bring one korban, and that does it. You don't have to bring it five times just because you had five of these instances. Um, Kamesh leaders of our daughters, but if um, the 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 miscarriages were such that you could see that there was a fetus there, right? And 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 that's and there's no question about it. 
or Chomesh Zivas Vados, or five consecutive months, she saw um, uh, a, dis a blood discharge for th on three consecutive days. Then, Mavia Koban Echod, Vachelis Bizavachim. She again brings one korban, and then she's uh, able to eat from the sacrificial meat. The hasha'or alechayva, but the other, but the she still owes the base of the four korbanos. We don't say we we don't worry about those, those four. She's still got to bring those four in due course. My sir. Now, so the point of the korban was a pair of birds. Um, you know, whatever it is. <clears throat> So, so the situation happened like this. The people that sold the birds, you know, if you've if you've seen the the some of the excavations from Yerushalayim now, and you go to to the exhibition there, they show you how there was a there was a road uh, outside the walls of the where where the people who sold all the animals and the birds for the sacrifices were there set up their stall. Now there was a, there was a time when the people selling. Again, they hiked up their price. Now, Dino Zahav was a, a large amount of money. A golden Dino is a large amount of money. And, um, you know, if, if you're a person that's now got to bring four or five of these carbonates, it's going to be a very expensive business. Omar Rabin Shimon Gamriel, when Shimon Gamriel said, Hamoyle say he made a, 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 almost like an oath on the on the base of Mikdosh. Lo Alin Halayla, I am not going to rest tonight. Adji Yehu B'dinarim. Until the price of these things have been reduced to um, the, the, the cost of a silver dealer, which is one twenty fifth of a gold. Nicholas Levastin, and he went into the Bastin. He was the Nazi of the Bastin, and he's a limit, and he taught as follows. So, if you had a woman who had five miscarriages where there was definitely a fetus there, right? Or Chomesh Zivas Vodos, or five of these instances of of, of um, uh, a discharge that, that counts as a Zavo. Mavia Korban Echod, she brings one Korban, but Ocheres Bizavachim, she can eat from the sacrificial meat. The Eina Shole Hachoyva. And I, I Paskin, that the, all the other four that would normally be owed, the other four Korbans would be normally owed that she'd have to bring, he says, I cancel that. I cancel that. Now, this actually is against what the Torah says. But there is a case, there's a situation of Esau says Hashem, that, uh, as I think it's a possible commission, that, that sometimes when there are extreme circumstances come along, the the uh, the ultimate authority has the power to uh, alter certain things in the Torah on a temporary basis. So he did this. He made this, this psaq. And immediately, now suddenly the price of these birds, because the supply and demand, the price of these birds came right down uh, to a, a quarter of, um, uh, of a silver dinner each. So again, the Pesach was made, in this case, to make it uh, easy for people. Um, a, a final uh, source here. Um, so we're talking now about preparing for Shabbos. Even if somebody is very poor and he relies on support from other people, if he has a, a little a little of his own, he should try very hard to do something to be to honor the Shabbos. So, um, and we are aware they said. You know, listen, you have to scale down your Shabbos, make it almost like a weekday in terms of your expenses. Uh, they only said that, that to, to, to somebody who's really rock bottom and has got no resources whatsoever. So Al Kane, and therefore, the, the, the din says to Shulchan Aruch is, some say, a person should um, hold back a little bit on his expenses to the other. Uh, days of the week, eat less food, whatever. In order to give honor to the Shabbos and have slightly more elaborate meals. So on this, the Mogin Avram says like this. Uh, what does it mean? How do you, how do you mechabit the Shabbos? You should have at least two cooked dishes for your meals, right? And it writes there 
שיוכל בכל סעודה משלושה סעודות, that at each of the three Shabbos meals, dog it, you should also have, have, eat fish. Right, right. But nearly, so the Mavin Avram writes, and according to my, my way of thinking, the Chol Echot Lefitivo, it all depends on a person's nature. I mean, some people don't like fish, so maybe they should, maybe they should bring some other um, delicacy to the table. But he carries on, and this is what I've um, highlighted in gray. Im Ha'arelim Miyakrin Hashar Dogit. If the non-Jewish fishmongers Right, not everybody had a Nat Jacobs in town. You lived in place, right? If the non-Jewish fishmongers raise the price of fish, because they know the Jews need fish for Shabbos, so they're going to make it more difficult for them. Nochen the take, it's appropriate for the rabbi to make a takhala, to, to paskin a zoi, shall yik no dog, and they shouldn't buy fish for Shabbos, all right? Um, and and in that way, the it'll bring the price of fish down. He says for Raya, and the, the his proof for saying this is me Mishnah decreases the from the Mishnah that I read to you just before that we saw in Greece. Now all of these are all completely unconnected things. But what it does show is that there are um, there are circumstances in which Rabbi has a certain amount of leeway in in. I can't. They're not going to fuss with the bacon's kosher. Yeah, that's a bad. That's, but within, with a lot of areas of halacha, there are uh, there is room for maneuver, and um, depending on the on the person's circumstances and so on, it's possible for a for a to be uh, to take a, a, a more lenient view. It's not always possible, and we're not talking about pikuach nefesh or something extreme where obviously most things go out of the window completely. We're talking about normal circumstances, and and therefore. Um, although, as I say, it's not really a free-for-all, there are clearly defined limits of acceptability, but a person shouldn't necessarily um, be strict with themselves and put themselves in, in uh, uh, difficult circumstances. Best to ask, at least go ask, you know, they used to say, the uh, Charlotte's trade, go ask the Charlotte, the, the rabbi Taylor's trade. It's, 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 worth, it's worth a shot to see whether in your particular situation, um, it might be possible to find a truth. So that's basically the uh, the story yeah. this morning. Um, I don't, I don't know yeah, okay, no. Thank you very much. So we'll all be knocking at Rabbi Lister's door now, uh, <laughs> asking for leniency. So. We bring our car to Saul on Shabbos or whatever. It is. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Rabbi Shinder, for that. Um, I will. Sign off now on those on Zoom. See you all next week. You're much number 15 minutes later. Start next week. We're coming in on Zoom.